Hello, boys and girls. How are you feeling today? Welcome to our English show. I am Mr. D, and I'll be your on-screen English teacher for the day. And I'm Gramwitz. I'll be with you from today's episode and onwards. Exciting, yeah? Oh, hi, Gramwitz. Hmm. I was told that you are the grammar know-it-all, so I am pretty sure you know a lot about English grammar. Definitely. I wasn't called grammar know-it-all for nothing. All right, we will test your knowledge about it soon enough. But first, my dear boys and girls, you must know that throughout this series, we will focus on all aspects of English grammar, which are very helpful for you, especially in writing and speaking. So, boys and girls, to start off, I want you to look around. What can you see? What can you smell? What can you hear, taste, and touch? As for me, I could see you watching me attentively at home. You must be wondering, why did I ask those questions earlier, right? Well, it is because we are actually going to learn about nouns. Do you know anything about nouns? Well, nouns are people, places, and things that you can see, you can touch, hear, smell, and taste. Let's take a simple scenario at the beach. When you're there, enjoying the company of the sunny sun, you could see people resting under the parasols, dogs catching the frisbees thrown at them, people lining up to get ice creams, some boys playing beach volleyball, and some families having picnic after building sandcastles together. Well, boys and girls, sun, people, parasols, dogs, frisbees, ice cream, boys, volleyball, families, picnic, and sandcastles are all examples of nouns. Why, you may ask? It's all because we can see them, smell them, touch them, hear them, and even taste them. Some would say that everything that has a name are nouns. So, it doesn't matter if they are people, place, things, or animals. As long as they have a name, they are all nouns. Basically, you could say that nouns are everything. Remember, earlier on, we've agreed that everything that has a name is a noun. So, let's do this simple exercise together. Read the sentences that I am about to share with you and look for the nouns in it. Let the fun begin. Both Lisa and Rose are part of the play. She was born and raised in Shah Alam. Are you done? If you are, why not we discuss the answers now? For the first question, both Lisa and Rose are part of the play. The nouns are Lisa, Rose, and play. Lisa and Rose are people's names. Because the names are special, they belong to another subgroup of nouns known as proper nouns. We have to use capital letters when writing about proper nouns. Hence, the capital letter L in Lisa and capital letter R in Rose. Play is similar to theater or drama. It involves group of people acting on stage with props and costumes. Since we can see a play, therefore, play 
is a noun. She was born and raised in Shah Alam. There is only one noun in this sentence. Can you guess which one is it? Yes, you are correct. The answer is Shah Alam because it is a name of a place situated in Selangor, Malaysia. Just like Lisa and Rose in the previous question, Shah Alam is also an example of proper nouns because the name is specific to a certain part in Selangor State. Therefore, when writing the word Shah Alam, be sure to capitalize the letter S in Shah and the letter A in Alam. There you have it, boys and girls. Whenever we talk about nouns, always remember that it means everything, every person, every place, and every animal that you can see, hear, touch, smell, and taste. Logically speaking, everything that we can see, touch, hear, smell, and taste could be in singular or in plural form. What's singular and what's plural? Singular is when the quantity of something or someone is just one. Meanwhile, plural is when you have more than one. To make it easier for you to understand this, why not you play this game instead? The rule of the game is very simple. You will see a silhouette of something and you have to guess it. Just that. Easy, right? There are seven carrots. No questions? Great. So, on your mark, get set, go! There you have it, a simple exercise on singular and plural nouns. By the way, boys and girls, do you notice that when you answered the questions earlier, you added either S or ES at the end of the nouns? For example, two brushes and five school bags. Which brings me to the question, when are we going to add S and when are we going to add ES at the end of a noun? Is there any rules to it? The answer is yes. In general, there are a few rules on spelling the plural nouns. Lucky you, we are going through each and every one of them. Without wasting any more time, let's get the lesson started. The first rule is to add S for most nouns, particularly those that end with the letter B, C, D, E, G, K, L, M, N, P, R, T and W. For example, one bat, two bats, one watermelon, five watermelons. As you can see, the last letter for the word bat is T. 
Therefore, if we are going to spell the plural form of this type of animal, we need to add the letter S. The same scenario goes with the word watermelon. Since the ending letter for this word is N, we have to add the ending S to show that there is actually more than one watermelon. Easy, right? Oh yeah, boys and girls, could you have a look at these words and find out what do they have in common? Did you get the answer that I'm looking for? Look closely and you will see that there's one thing that all these words have in common. It's none other than the fact that all of them end with the letter O. Whenever we want to write the plurality for words ending with the letter O, there are two key points that we need to consider. If the letter before the letter O is a consonant, we have to add ES next to it. Hence, one tomato and three tomatoes. However, if the letter before the letter O is a vowel, either A, E, I, or U, we need to just add the letter S. Let's have a look at this word. The letter before O is the letter E. Since E is a vowel, so we need to add the letter S at the end of this word. Therefore, one video, two videos. Imagine all of the consonants as a guy with hair, while the vowels as a bald guy. So, whenever two bald guys are standing next to one another, the letter S is used. However, when a bald guy and a guy with a hair are standing next to one another, the letter ES are used. So boys and girls, whenever you are confused, just think of these two types of guys, okay? Our next rule involves nouns ending with the letter Y. Please have a look at these two different words. Both of these words end with the letter Y. Since these two words are countable, there are two forms to spell via plurality. Just like the previous rule, this rule can be divided into two situations as well. It's all depending on the letter that comes before the letter Y. Let's say the letter before the letter Y is a consonant, be it B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, N, etc. We need to drop the letter Y and change it with an I and add E, S after it. So, one baby and six babies. One strawberry and 5,000 strawberries. What if the letter before the letter Y is a vowel? Either A, E, I, O, or U. Are we going to add ES after the word? Well, in this case, we do not have to add ES. Instead, we simply need to add the letter S. For instance, key. Since the letter before Y is a vowel E, we need to add 
the letter S at the end. So it's one key and six keys. And definitely not six keys or six keys. So boys and girls, we have learned that when spelling plural nouns, we need to add S if the nouns end with the letter B, C, D, E, G, K, L, M, N, P, R, T, and W. We also need to add ES if the word ends with the letter O. But the letter before that must be a consonant. If the letter before O is a vowel, we cannot add ES. But we still need to add S to show plurality. We also learned that for words ending with Y, S is added. Only if the letter before Y is a vowel. If the letter before Y is a consonant, we need to first change the letter Y to I and then add ES behind it. So, how are you coping with all these rules? Are they still tricky to you? Don't worry too much about it, okay? You just have to keep on practicing it until you get it right. You know what they say, practice makes perfect. I am not trying to stress you out, but we still have a few more spelling rules of plural forms. Before I explain in more detail about these two rules, let me ask you a simple question. Earlier, we have learned that certain words ending with these letters would need an additional letter either S or ES or even IES at the end of it, right? So, what about the remaining letters such as CH, SH, S, 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 X, Z, F, and F, E. What should we do if we have more than one brush? How can we describe the plural form for glass? Well, well, well. Dear boys and girls, keep this in mind with you. Whenever there are words ending with CH, SH, S, SS, S, X, and Z, we should always add ES after it. Why not you try this quick exercise? Here, I have six pictures. They are all nouns. What you need to do is simply find the odd one out. In other words, I'm asking you to find one picture that does not belong in the category. A simple tip would be to check the final letter in each of the words before choosing your answer. May the odds be in your favor and good luck! Have you decided which of these six pictures is the odd one out? Excellent! The odd one out among the group is definitely potato. Do you know why? This is because, unlike the other words, potato does not end with either CH, SH, S, SS, S, X, and Z. However, these words do share one thing in common. Would you like to take a guess? Yes, definitely. The spelling of the plurality is formed with the addition of ES. Hence, the plural form for these words are churches. 
brushes, buses, glasses, and foxes. Another spelling of plural noun that's worth remembering is for nouns ending in F or FE, we have to change F to V and then add ES after it. The most common example for this situation would be leaf. If you want to describe a single leaf, you would say one leaf. However, when there are more than one leaf at hand, you have to say leaves. Isn't it interesting? Now, I know that there are a lot for you to remember. But worry not, I have prepared a simple trick for you to master this in no time. Are you ready for the secret to be revealed? Here it is. Just in case you stumbled upon problem remembering about the plural form in the future, just use this formula. Shelly checks out Iman's axes only to find out few of them wear nice scarves. Why? She cries. Why this formula? True, it does not make any sense at all. But each of the lines in this chant helps you to remember the plural noun forms. Check this out. Shelly checks out Iman's axis. Shelly represents the letter combination of SH, while checks and out represent the letters C, H, and O. So basically, whenever you have all these letters as the endings, you just need to add ES to make it plural. Hence, the word axis. Only to find out few of them wear nice scarves. For this section, the word fine and few both represent words ending with F and FE. And you know what happens when we have nouns ending with these letters, right? We have got to change F to V and add ES. Hence the word scarves. And finally, is this phrase. Why? She cries. Care to guess what does this phrase represent? You got it right. It's why. As you can see clearly here, why stands for those nouns ending with the letter Y. And whenever we have such words, all we need to do is to change the letter I and add ES. But remember, this is only possible if the letter before the letter Y is also a consonant. See, I told you that it's going to be easy. So, boys and girls, today we have learned that everything that we can see, smell, taste, touch, and hear is a noun. That includes both me and you. Since most of the nouns are countable, there should also be plural forms. And to remember that, sing this song. Shelly checks out Iman's access only to find out few of them wear nice scarves Why she cries. Here's some fun fact for you. Even though we have learned that we need to add S, ES, and IES for certain nouns, please do not be surprised that there are words that do not fit any of these rules. This group is called the irregular plural nouns. Among of these words are child and children, ox and oxen, mouse and mice, deer and deer, and so much more. 
my dear boys and girls. Before we end our episode for today, we have another challenge for you. So, embrace yourself for the mega challenge. Mind you that from today onwards, we will leave you with a mega challenge for you to complete at your own time at the end of the show. You may share with us the final product of yours on any social media platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok by using these hashtags. Hashtag Gram it right, hashtag Gramwiz, hashtag Grammar made easy gram. Your mega challenge for today is to produce a simple shape poem. You can choose any nouns to be the shape of the poem and write your poem around it, like this. If possible, try to use all aspects of today's lesson in your poem, including the plural forms. Once you are done with your shape poem, kindly upload it on your social media platform. And don't forget to use these hashtags. That will be all for now. Until then, goodbye boys and girls.